Our topic for this morning is neutrality. Uh, it's based on that lesson in the workbook in part two, my body is a wholly neutral thing, and that's wholly W-H-O-L-O-Y. Uh, in other words, that, that's totally neutral. Uh, this can be mis, uh, uh, mistaken uh, to mean something that it, that it doesn't. Uh, on one level, the body is hardly neutral. Uh, we're told in the text that the body was made as a limitation on love. Uh, we're told in the workbook that the world was made as an attack on love, and obviously the body is a, a, an intrinsic part of the world. Uh, so th those are hardly neutral thoughts to, to establish a limitation when God's love is limitless and to make up a world and a body that's an attack on God uh, can hardly be thought of as neutral. However, once the world is here, and once we are born into bodies, the body then becomes neutral insofar as it serves the purpose of either the ego or the Holy Spirit. That's the neutrality. I could choose one or the other. All right? So it's like being in an automobile that only has two gears, forward or, or drive and reverse. And then there's, there's neutral. But in this car, namely in, in the state of the split mind, one can never remain in neutral. We must always choose one or the other. But the choice is mine, and that's why the body then becomes a wholly neutral thing. I either choose to see my body and my life in the body and all my experiences and relationships as a body as serving the purpose of the ego, which is to root me in its prison of guilt and attack and judgment, thereby keeping me uh, forever asleep, dreaming its dream of separation, in which I exist, but it's not my fault. Someone else has done this to me. Or I see the body and my various experiences here as living in the body as serving the purpose of Jesus or the Holy Spirit, whereby the body and my life here becomes a classroom right, in which Jesus is my teacher who uses the curriculum, which is my life, my, my relationships, my body, my, my personality, my skills, my aptitudes, my deficiencies and inadequacies, uses all of these as an opportunity of teaching me that I am perfect as a son of God that no matter what I've made of my body, it has not denied or dismissed or changed in any way my true reality as spirit, as God's perfect son uh, that the Course calls Christ. In that sense, it doesn't matter, for example, why things happen to me. I, it, it is not helpful from the purpose of this Course to agonize, why am I doing this to myself again? Or why, when I was driving on the, on the freeway, I suddenly got a flat tire, right? Uh, certain New Age thought systems might say, well, well, my mind attracted the, the nail and that's why I got the tire, and et cetera, et cetera. That makes no sense from the point of view of the Course because what it does is establishes as not being neutral. And once I wonder why something happened, I'm saying it did happen and I'm making the past real. But since there is no past, I'm simply projecting my experiences in the present onto the past. What does make sense is once I get a flat tire, to use that uh, as a really neutral example, pardon the pun, I recognize that the flat tire is neutral. In other words, it can now serve the purpose of the ego, namely I feel victimized, I feel unfairly treated, I feel anxious, I feel frightened. Right? Or I could see from the point of view of Jesus, uh, quoting Lesson 134, uh, excuse me, Lesson 34, I could see peace instead of this. That no matter what, it, what happened to my car, or to extend this out, no matter what happened to my body or the body of my loved ones, at this very moment, in what the Course calls the holy instant, I could be at peace. That's what makes my sick body, or the sick body of a loved one, or my sick car, or my, the sick world in which I live, neutral. It could either serve the ego's purpose of rooting me in hell, or Jesus' purpose of being a stepping stone towards my awakening to the heaven that I never left. It's all a matter of choice. Right? One of the major themes of this course is, is that we recognize, in fact, one could say it's probably the, or the principal purpose of this course, is that we recognize the power of the mind to choose. The, it's in that power that we find the body's neutrality. It doesn't matter, once again, why something happened in the past. It doesn't matter what might happen in the future. What happens is at any given moment right now, I could choose to see peace instead of the conflict and anxiety that I'm experiencing. So no matter what things occur, whether they're, they're catastrophic from the world's point of view or really insignificant from the world's point of view, we have the choice whether to see it as a mild annoyance, as a, as a source of tremendous fear and anxiety and anger, or to see it as an opportunity of learning that I am not my body, 
As the workbook says, I'm not a body, I'm free, I'm still as God created me. And to use the body as a, a learning lesson, to, to see it as a, a, my life here as a classroom is a way th that I can really come to understand, recognize, and accept that I am indeed not a body, but I am a mind. And in that awareness, I'm truly made free of anything that might happen to me in the world. <laughs>